who I believe to be the true birthers of choosing beggars, its entitled parents. Our first one is from Alert News 3546. When I was 10 years old, my parents literally gave me a horse for Christmas. She was a purebred Arabian mare named Jess. My mom was a riding instructor who already owned her own horse and I'd grown up with them, so this wasn't quite as crazy as it sounds. By the age of 10, I was a good enough rider to go galloping across the prairies with my mom and her horse friends. A few years later, we moved to a rural property where we could keep my mom's horse Harry and Jess. I loved Jess so, so much. For the first couple of years, we didn't have water in our barn, so one of our chores was hauling huge, heavy buckets of water from the sink in the house all winter. I cleaned the stall, I helped build and repair fences, I drove the tractor to mow the pasture. All stuff a normal 12 year old kid does. <laughs> Here's where the entitlement comes in. You see, the horse was never about me. It was about my mom. She needed Jess to keep Harry company and to teach riding lessons. All through my teen years, my mom and dad threatened me with selling Jess. If I got a bad grade, they'd sell the horse. If I went to a bad party, they'd sell the horse. If I stepped a toe out of line in any way at all, they'd sell the horse. I was a perfect kid with perfect grades who never even kissed a boy or had a drink or smoked anything at all because of my fear that I'd wake up one day and my horse would be gone. If I ever complained about anything, they told me, shut up and be grateful you have a horse. Well, my parents hit some hard times financially, and they decided to spend the money they'd invested for my college fund on maintaining their lifestyle. They told me I'd be on my own for school. I graduated high school early and got a job to save up, but it wasn't enough. I couldn't qualify for government student loans because my parents made too much money, and I had developed a severe, life-threatening allergy to horses. After doing chores in the barn or brushing Jess or going for a ride, I would sneeze and cough for two hours unless I took the maximum possible dose of Benadryl. One time, I got horse sweat in my eye and it swelled shut in seconds. I now carried an EpiPen, but my parents still made me do barn chores. My allergies to horses were life-threatening and my parents knew this. Finally, Harry died, and Jess was all alone. Horses are herd animals, and it was cruel. I told my mom I needed to finally sell Jess. It was better for her, and I desperately needed the money for school. My mom said no. After all those years of threats, my horse was never mine at all. I got a bank loan for school, but after this and many other stories, I no longer speak to my parents. I have to say that's not an effective way to raise a child with constant threats and then telling them that something is actually theirs when you know for a fact it's not. It's just cold in so many ways and I can understand why you don't speak to your parents anymore. This next one is by Brandy Aid and Love. Last night, a very young looking woman came in pretty late. With her, she has a baby, maybe four to six months, and a toddler. This is probably around 9.15 to 9.30 p.m. She grabbed the fixings for a steak dinner for two and a kid's frozen dinner. She had a bottle of red wine. She doesn't look anywhere near 21. She looks more like 16. Cashier asks for ID. She doesn't have it on her. Sorry, no wine tonight. Cue the demand for a manager, me. I said the same thing. No ID, no wine. She started screaming at me that they just moved to this area and she has misplaced her wallet. I'm ruining her Valentine's Day because her husband just got in from bringing another load of their stuff and she needs this wine. Sorry, but sob stories won't keep me out of jail, from getting fines for me and the store, loss of job for me, and loss of liquor license for the store. I can't help you. She was pissed. It was quite obvious on her face. She paid for the food and started to walk away. She made it as far as the door. 
The bagger had just started walking to return the wine when she ran back to him, grabbed it, and spiked it like a football after scoring the winning touchdown. She ran out of the door with her cart and kids. Oh yeah, calling the police. I got her license plate and the make of her car. I dealt with the police officer and making the report while the other closing manager finalized the closing of the store and supervised the cleanup. We left around an hour after the incident. I had to drop some stuff off at my mother-in-law's, so it took me in the opposite direction that I normally take. Going this direction took me past the liquor store. I noticed two police cruisers with lights in the parking lot. One of my brother's best lifelong friends is the night manager of this liquor store. This man had been like a little brother to me for nearly 40 years, so my worried and nosy self turned in. Yep, there's his car. I parked next to it. A third cruiser pulls in. It was at this time I realized the only customer car in the parking lot was matching the young lady that had smashed the bottle of wine at the feet of my minor bagger, endangering him with glass shards. The officer stepped out of his vehicle, and it's the same one I would just given the report about half an hour prior. I stepped out and called him by name before he went inside. He recognized me and took a step closer. I pointed at her car and told him I was pretty sure that was the vehicle belonging to the young woman from my report. He looked at it, nodded, and walked into the liquor store. I sent a text to friend, Hey, call me later. I think you've called the police on someone I had to call on also. We finally connected around midnight. Yup, it was the same person. She had attempted to enter the liquor store with her children and he stopped her. In my state, you have to be 21 to enter a liquor store or smoke shop. There are no exceptions, not even for babies or small children. There are big red signs on the door stating this. She immediately told him that was ridiculous. She needed a bottle of red wine and some dumb bitch at the grocery store refused to sell it to her. He said he really didn't care, but the children could not enter the store and to take them out. She started screaming about already regretting moving to this ass-backwards state and she was just grabbing a damn bottle of wine whether he liked it or not. He told her nope, not from his store. That's when she grabbed a wire rack display of mini bottles and slammed it to the floor. About a hundred mini bottles hit the floor, shattering. That's when he hit the silent alarm and immediately dispatched the police to the liquor store. She ended up being arrested for child endangerment, theft, vandalism, and destruction of property. The father, her husband, could not be reached, so DCFS showed up to take the children with them. I feel like what this person needs more than wine is to learn how to be a better parent because I don't know any good parents that would put their children in this kind of situation all over a bottle of fucking wine. And our final one is from Razzy Ket. We have a not so small vegetable garden in the backyard of my family's house. Me and my mom are the gardeners, and we grow a bunch of zucchini, snap peas, herbs, broccoli, carrots, tomatoes, and even grapes with the occasional other vegetables, radishes, bell peppers, etc. One day I hear something outside my window, which is right above the largest planter box in our garden. I look outside to see two kids from the neighborhood picking vegetables from the planter box. I run out and see two of them have their arms full of zucchini and carrots and even some tomatoes. I ask what on earth they are doing and they say, we live in the neighborhood. I told them that those are our vegetables and they can't take them. They just said, it's our neighborhood too, we can have them if we want. And they took off before I could stop them literally vaulting over the small fence that separates our side of the yard from the neighbors. Different neighbors, not the ones that were stealing. A few days later, I heard something outside my window again. I look out and see the kid's mom loading a basket with vegetables from the planter. I rush out again and see that her and her kids are loading baskets with everything they could grab. I watched as the mom grabbed a handful of chives I had been growing and ripped them out, roots and all. 
My mom must have heard me run out, because she came out as well. She yelled, asking what they think they're doing, and the kids just kept picking vegetables, while the mom just turned, annoyed. It's everyone's neighborhood, and we need the food, she said, still picking from the garden, and desecrating my prized chives. My mom told her that if she had just asked, we would have given her some, and even if it is everyone's neighborhood, it's our garden. She just huffed and left with her kids, and there wasn't anything we could do. Our garden was damaged beyond repair. Our zucchini plants were torn to bits, and the peas and tomatoes were trampled and shredded, and our grape bush that we had for years was broken at the base where one of them had stepped on it. There were no fresh vegetables that year, and my mom couldn't make her chocolate chip zucchini bread. A few days later, we installed a lock on the backyard fence, and the neighbors came banging on our door, mad that we had installed a lock, preventing them from getting to our garden. My mom just told them to go away, and if she saw them in our garden again, she would call the cops. Thankfully, we never saw them again, and our garden is happy now, and we managed to bring the grapes back to life. A little while ago, we planted some blueberry bushes in our front yard. Someone keeps stealing them, and half the blueberries are gone each season. We let the kids in the neighborhood eat them, but they only take maybe like 8 to 10 each a day on weekends or during the summer. There are 10 bushes in total, about 100 to 150 blueberries each. Hmm, I wonder who's taking 500 blueberries each year. Hmm, we haven't caught them yet, but everyone knows. You have to absolutely love the failure of the mom in this story and how she's teaching her kids to be so entitled because they live in the same neighborhood. I guarantee this mother would feel differently if somebody came onto her property and started picking anything off of her plants and then playing the it's the neighborhood card. Alright, that's enough entitlement for the day. Well that wraps up this episode of Entitled Parents. If you liked the video, please drop a like, share my content on all of your social media, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to hit that bell so you're notified every time I upload, and drop a comment down below. It really helps with the algorithm and helps new people find my channel. Thanks for watching, thanks to my patrons, have a great day and stay safe out there.